In this uh, tutorial, we are going to look at a numerical problem on how to calculate the power requirements of a pump. And uh, for this, we will look at a, a simple uh, setup where we have a tank on the left-hand side, a uh, pump, and then a valve, a uh, couple of elbows in the pipe uh, to raise the water uh, to the top of a second tank which is shown on the right hand side. So in terms of the uh, problem statement uh, we have a centrifugal pump that is being used to pump water from an open tank using a pipe with a nominal diameter of 0 0.02291 meters and the mass flow rate of the water through the pipe is 1.5 kilograms per second. Uh, there are uh, two 90 degree elbows, uh, standard elbows, and one angle valve that is installed in the pipe. Uh, the total length of the pipe is uh, 35 meters. Uh, the water level in the supply tank is uh, two meters above the floor level, and it is discharged from the pipe above the second tank at a height of 10 meters. Uh, so we are to calculate the power requirement of the pump. So in terms of the givens, uh, we have the pipe diameter of 0 0.02291 meters. The mass flow rate is uh, 1.5 kilograms per second. Uh, the pipe length, the total length of pipe from one tank to the, to the other discharge side is uh, 35 meters. The liquid levels, uh, level in the supply tank is uh, 2 meters and uh, the water is discharged at 10 meters. So the values of Z1 is uh, 2 meters and Z2 10 meters. And we are going to assume values of viscosity uh, and density. So viscosity we will assume as mu equals 993.5. 414 into 10 raised to power minus 6 pascal seconds and that is the same as kilograms per meter seconds and the density is 998.2 kilograms per meter cube. Note that although the viscosity and density value were not given uh, I'm assuming that uh, those are provided uh, to you uh, in the problem statement. So for the approach, uh, we are going to use the energy equation to determine the pump power as we have seen in a separate tutorial on the theory about power requirements for a pump. So in terms of solution, we will go through step by step uh, so that we can uh, obtain all the different values that are needed for the pump power requirement. So first we need to calculate the mean velocity uh, through the pipe. And so that mean velocity is the mass flow rate divided by the density of water divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe. And that equals 1.5 kilograms per second divided by 998.2 kilogram per cubic meters times the cross-sectional area that is uh, pi times 0 0.02291 square divided by 4. And that equals... Uh, 3.65 meters per second. Next we calculate a Reynolds number to find out whether we have laminar or turbulent flow and uh, Reynolds number is the density times the mean velocity times the diameter of that pipe divided by mu which is a viscosity of water and that equals 998.2 cubic kilograms per cubic meters times 0.02291 meters times 3.65 meters per second divided by 993.414 into 10 raised to power minus 6 kilograms per meter second. And all the units will cancel out and we find that Reynolds number is 84,024 and that value tells us that uh, we have turbulent flow in the pipe. Now, the energy equation uh, that you can obtain from uh, another tutorial on the theory will need to be modified because the velocity u1 will be zero uh, because the movement of the water 
level in the tank uh, is going to be relatively small compared to uh, the velocity at location two where the water is uh, coming out of the discharge port on the top of the second tank. So U1 equals zero and the pressures at the top of the uh, water level in the supply tank uh, will be same as discharge port or atmospheric pressure. So P1 equals P2. So if we cancel out some of the terms in the energy equation, we will be left with G, which is the acceleration due to gravity, times 2 uh, plus EP, where EP is the energy uh, requirements for the pump, and that equals G times 10, which is the 10 meter is the uh, elevation uh, where the water is being discharged, times the velocity 3.65 square divided by 2 uh, that is the kinetic energy term uh, plus EF which is the uh, frictional energy component. So in the next step we will determine the friction factor uh, because that will be needed in our uh, calculations further down. Uh, so at Reynolds number of 84,024 and if we assume that the pipe is smooth, in other words, the uh, relative roughness equals zero, then either from the Moody diagram or through spreadsheet calculation, you can obtain the value of friction factor as 0 0.0046. So let's determine the various uh, uh, frictional terms uh, in this uh, system. In step five, uh, we look at the entrance uh, from the supply tank into the pipe and uh, again from the theory you will need to look at these uh, formulas. So for CFC we have uh, 0 0.4 in parentheses 1.25 those are the two constant terms in that expression minus 0 uh, and that e gives us 0 0.5. Uh, note that uh, we get 0 because the diameter D2 uh, is uh, much smaller than the diameter 1, so d2 square over d1 square equals 0 in that expression. Again, you will need to look at the uh, formula uh, in the theory section. So that gives us uh, delta p over rho equals uh, 0 0.5 that we just obtained for CFC times the velocity square divided by 2, uh, where velocity is 3.65 meter per second and that gives us 3.33 joules per kilograms, uh, the energy term for uh, the entrance uh, from the supply tank into the pipe. You may wonder why do we have the units of joules per kilogram where on the left hand side uh, the term that we used was velocity uh, square and that will be meter square per second square. I suggest you look at the end of this tutorial where I give a small uh, explanation of how you convert the units such as meter square per second square into joules per kilogram. Now the two elbows uh, and the angle valve also provide certain amount of frictional energy and that would be equal to delta P over rho equals 2 times 1.5 uh, where uh, 1.5 is the constant that we obtain uh, from the tables. Again uh, you will need to look at the theory uh, for the elbows. So it's 2 times 1.5 plus 2. Uh, 2 is again the value obtained from the tables for the angle valve and that is multiplied with the velocity square 3.65 square and divided by 2. That equals 33.31 joules per kilogram. Now the other frictional term that remains is for the pipe length of 35 meters and for that again uh, you will need to look at the uh, formula in the theory section and in a separate video on uh, pump power requirements. So EF equals 2 times 0 0.0046 which is the friction factor times the velocity square 3.65 raised to power 2 times the length of the pipe which is 35 meters 
divided by the diameter of the pipe, which is 0 0.00291 meters. And that gives us 187.2 joules per kilogram. So in step eight, the total friction loss uh, is then obtained by summing the terms that we have just calculated. So we have 187.2 for the pipe length, 33.31 is the frictional energy because of the two elbows and the one angle valve. And also we have the frictional energy uh, loss due to the entrance from the supply tank into the pipe, and that is 3.33. So that, when added, gives us 223.84 joules per kilogram. And then in step nine, uh, we now determine the value for EP, uh, and that is from the equation, the energy equation, which we saw earlier in step three. So that is uh, that equation is rearranged. So we have EP equals 9.81, which is the acceleration due to gravity, times 10 minus 2, uh, and then we add 3.65, which is a velocity square divided by 2, plus the frictional energy EF that we have just calculated as 223.84. So the value for EP then is 308 Point nine eight joules per kilogram. To obtain the power in step 10, uh, we multiply that energy term with the mass flow rate, uh, which was 1.5 kilograms per second. And in the units, the kilograms will cancel out, so we'll be left with joules per second. So we get 463.5 joules per second. And we know that uh, joule per second is same as watts. So we have 463.5 watts as the power requirement for the pump. So as an overview, note that we first needed to calculate the velocity, uh, then the Reynolds number, and then after we know the Reynolds number, uh, we can write down our energy equation uh, for uh, the, uh, the system we have. Uh, then from Reynolds number, we determine the friction factor because we will need to find out all the frictional energy terms. For example, for a frictional loss due to water entering from the tank into the pipe, the frictional loss due to the various fittings. In our case, we had two elbows and one angle valve. And again, we will need to obtain certain uh, factors from uh, the tables uh, that we obtain either from the textbook or from other references. And then we find out the friction loss for the total pipe length, uh, then add up all those friction losses. Uh, once we have those, then we can go back to the energy equation and uh, determine uh, the value for EP, which is the uh, uh, total uh, energy required uh, to move that water from one tank to another. And then we can convert that into power uh, since we know the mass flow rate. Let's briefly look at why the units meter square per second square are the same as joules per kilogram. So on the left-hand side, let's multiply with the kilogram, both in the numerator and denominator. And then also noting that force is equal to mass times acceleration. You know that from physics. Or if you write the units, uh, the unit for mass is kilogram, and the unit for acceleration is meter per second square. Now, if we look at our quantity that we obtained before, uh, meter square kilogram divided by second square kilogram, and we uh, re rewrite the numerator as kilogram meter times meter divided by second square kilogram. And then we observe that the quantity that is circled here, kilogram per meter second square, is the same as force. And we express force with units of Newton. So we have Newton times meter divided by kilograms. And we also observe that Newton time meter is work 
which is the energy term, so that is joules, divided by kilograms. So we can write, instead of meter square per second square, the units joules per kilogram.